Hello students how are you hope you are all doing well today myself piraj majundar welcomes you to my official youtube channel make pro classes and we are already continuing our manufacturing processes and we have also completed our module 1 and we have moved to module 2 in module 2 we have already completed six lectures and we have completed the different uh, you know the basics concepts of uh, metal forming processes as well as uh, plastic deformation welding criteria fundamentals of hot and cold working processes as well and we have also completed in the previous lecture uh, the basic operations of sheet forming processes and uh, um, mainly punching and blanking etc now uh, we have uh, moved on to the next portion of the sheet forming processes so today we will be discussing on uh, you know the drawing process okay so let us start the class so let us start our today's class on drawing look drawing is a you know widely known process sheet metal forming process actually and it is a versatile process and it has got many more applications so today we will learn the different applications as well as the drawing process and uh, we'll continue with the um, different uh, procedure involved in drawing process okay so first of all what is drawing look this is not that drawing we used to draw a sketch or something but like likewise it is something that you may draw out of a raw material that is a drawing okay now drawing is you know is hot drawing is used for thick walled parts of simple geometries thinning takes place okay and a cold drawing uses relatively thin metal changes the thickness very little or not at all and produces parts in a wide variety of shapes now look uh, drawing is a process of making cups okay so i can write it for you that will be more interesting if i tell you some uh, you know the application for portions first so cups okay then shells and similar articles from metal blanks okay so uh, you know the the setup so i may show you a picture of setup so look this is the setup of drawing operation that you need to know so here you can find uh, the punch over here uh, the you know this 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 is the blank okay this is the blank and this is the cell okay so this is the die where you place the blank okay now if you consider this picture this picture you can see this is the rigid blank holder so uh, rigid blank holder means it firmly you know holds the sheet this sheet okay or you can say that uh, the job or work piece you can say also okay so this is the blank you can say also so you have to uh, you know make sure that it doesn't moves so a rigid blank holder is to be used for drawing purpose why because if it moves then it will not give you a desired shape now if you apply force on this particular punch it will give you a cup shape like this one okay so this is you know the basic you know uh, process involved in drawing now the setup look at the setup this setup is uh, somewhat similar to that used in blanking i already discussed with you the blanking and punching operation in my previous classes so this setup is similar to that of the uh, blanking except that the punch and die this punch and die are provided with necessary rounding at the corners this one rounding at the corners so it is a punch radius so here is also a radius is over okay so you can see uh, it is mostly similar with that of the you know blanking operation except that the punch and die are provided with the necessary rounding at the corners to allow for the smooth flow of metal during work, uh, drawing okay now the blank is first you know you can see over here is first kept on the die plate and then the punch slowly descends this one 
uh, on the blank and forces it to take the cup shape this one is the cup shape okay uh, formed by the end of the punch this one by the time it reaches the bottom of the die okay so coming to this portion it will totally form like a cup only okay now when the cup reaches the counter board portion of the die okay uh, the top edge of the cup formed around the punch expands slightly due to the spring back this portion will elongate or expand okay so when the punch moves in the return stroke the cup would be stripped by this counterboard portion okay now shallow drawing now there is a shallow drawing so shallow drawing is defined as that where the cup height so you can take a note so in case of shallow shallow drawing shallow drawing what happens uh, the cup height height uh, is less than uh, half the diameter so that is the shallow drawing you should take a note okay when the cup height is less than the half of the diameter it is known as the shallow drawing okay now for drawing deeper cups it is necessary to make specific provisions to continue the metal in order to prevent uh, excess wrinkling of the edges wrinkling you know at the edges okay now for to avoid the wrinkling a blank holder as you can see over here as i already told you that rigid blank holder holder is normally provided on all deep drawing dies okay now for uh, uh, you know deep drawing this is also one of the most important you know uh, deep drawing process for deep drawing what is the difference between deep drawing and shallow drawing you can see for deep drawing we have cup height so cup height would be more than half of the diameter so that is the deep drawing and in shallow drawing cup height will be less than half of the diameter so you must take a note and uh, remember or write it somewhere now in uh, you know uh, ductile materials are very easier to uh, to be drawn into uh, deeper cups so for deeper cups or you can say for uh, uh, deep drawing ductile materials are more suitable then in any other materials you can see over here okay now now blank size look here is a formula that is being widely used for solving numerical problems coming out of this particular uh, you know uh, drawing uh, particular uh, this drawing uh, chapter so this formula you can see over here this is the most most important formula you are going to use in your examinations and you must take a note so this is going to be your most important formula and this is very easy numericals are coming out of this you know this drawing chapter so you must take a note d equal to d square plus 4 dh okay so that is going to be very important formula that you will be needing for solving the uh, numericals based on uh, drawing operation okay so so look uh, what happens here let me show you how the formula comes actually say we have a uh, say we have a previously we have a this type of you know sheet okay and say the if you make this one say this one this uh, long sheet if you roll this one it becomes a circle and say it has got a diameter of d okay now what happens after the drawing operation what happens this is say this one you apply force over here and it got bends in such a way this one okay so after you know the drawing operation the same sheet this sheet becomes this one okay so cups so what happens if you consider this uh, you know diameter as d okay and uh, you can see over here this one this one is the diameter 
so let me show you so this one is the diameter this is the diameter previous one and then d small d this is small d you can see over here is uh, diameter after the cupping formation of the cup okay so previously it was having diameter d and after uh, drawing operation it has got become its diameter as d now the height has become h so if you consider the you know surface areas to be same okay so you can simply write it as previously it was having pi by 4 uh, d square okay for the you know the circular part this one now it has got this one so this h and this small d previously it was only having d okay so if you consider this type this uh, surface area of this particular cup then it becomes pi by 4 d square plus for this two sides okay if you consider that surface area it will become pi d h okay now if you remove the 4 from both of the sides it will come over here a 4 okay now if you also cancel out the pi this pi so so the final formula will come sum out this one it will become d square equal to d square that is a small d square plus 4 d h from here okay and if you remove the you know this square part over here then it will become square over here so d equal to d square plus 4 dh it will be the formula okay now here you can see you will find the formula and it is very important for your uh, solving numerical problems okay now there is also one condition over here when small d should be get at there 20 r that is a radius okay now there are two more formulas uh, this will be important for your mcq purposes as well so this becomes if you consider the second formula this is d equal to d square plus 4 dh minus 0.5 into r and this 0.5 into r should be outside the square root that is going to be very confusing one so you must take a note as because you will forget whether the 0.5r is inside the uh, root or outside the root and the conditions comes here 15r should be less than equals to d and d should be less than equals to 20r so d lies between 15r to 20r okay now the second formula gives you uh, this is a, a bit lengthy one so root over d minus 2r that's whole square plus 4d into h minus r plus 2 pi r into uh, d minus 0.7r okay and it comes when d is less than 10r so this is the formula mainly this formula you have to remember for solving this is very easy you know to remember d equal to root over d square plus 4dh and they will be providing you all the values in the examinations for the uh, numerical purposes and Mm, you just have to remember this formula and just you have to apply this formula to get out the uh, solutions from the numericals coming out of the you know uh, drawing um, chapter and one more thing you have to keep in mind that uh, this is the formula you just need to remember so this formula you can just uh, simply you can read out but this formulas uh, generally they don't give you questions on based on this particular formulas but uh, you just have to keep in mind if you are going for gate or other uh, competitive examinations mainly gate you can consider and for other competitive com uh, examinations you can expect mcqs coming out with this particular formulas okay so this will be the main formula you have to keep in mind now drawing force okay now drawing force so drawing force is given as p equal to pi d into sigma okay and it is under you know d by d minus c and c will be the clearance over here okay and the blank holding force is defined as it is the force required 
that depends on wrinkling tendency of the thumb. The maximum limit is generally to be one third of the drawing force. And the draw clearance is given as punch diameter is equal to minus di uh, uh, you know, die opening diameter minus 2.5 into thickness. Okay. Now, coming to the wet drawing, this is also uh, you know very important and widely used uh, process concerned with sheet metal forming processes. So, this is a cold working process to obtain wares from rods. So, this wet drawing is extensively used to form you know rods uh, or you can uh, actually wares from rods of bigger diameters through a die. So, this is going to be the process for manufacturing of wares. Simply wares you can see the electrical wares, different wares you are going to use in your uh, daily uh, household purposes. Okay. So, these wares are manufactured by this particular wire drawing process. Okay. Same process as bar drawing except that it involves smaller dire diameter material. So, it is as similar to the bar drawing also. Now, at the start of wire drawing, the end of the rod or wire to be drawn is pointed by swaging, etc. So, that it freely enters the die surface orifice and sticks out behind the die. Now, wire getting continuously wound on the reel. So, you are going to be have a reel and it is continu continuously being wound up on the reel. For fine wire, the material may be passed through a number of dies receiving successive reductions in diameter before being coiled. So, you might be having uh, successive you know uh, many number of uh, large number of dies uh, for successive reductions. Okay. For successive reductions means the diameter will uh, successively become smaller and smaller. Okay. Now, the wear is subject to tension only. As you can see, the wear is subject to tension only, but when it is in contact with the dies, then a combination of tensile Compressive and shear stresses, you must keep in mind, this is very important. So, what are the forces a, uh, you know, bar or rod has to be, you know, uh, face while wet drying. So, tensile, combination of tensile, compressive and shear stresses. But previously, it was only with in uh, tensile stress, but in the dye, it is a combination of tensile, compressive and shear stresses as well. So, you must take a note, okay, this one is very important, okay. So, next, this is the picture for wet drawing, okay. So, you can see over here, this is the entry path. So, this is going to be the entry path and you can see over here, this is the approach given over here and this is the approach angle, okay, this is alpha. And this is the back relief given over here and this is the bearing surface that is the land. So, a very small orifice is you know having over here and this is in between the dies and the rods coming you know entering this portion coming out of as a wear. So, say this one type of wares. Okay. So, that is the wear drawing process. Okay. Now, die materials. So, you can see over here die materials are generally used uh, for this uh, die, uh, wire drawing process is uh, tool steels or tungsten carbides or polycrystalline diamond okay so they, that are the um, tools generally being used for wire drawing die okay so next we have rod and tube drawing. So, previously you have learned about the wet drawing process. Now, rod drawing is similar to that of wet drawing also except for the fact that the dies are bigger because of the rod size being larger than the wet. Okay. So, that is the rod drawing. That is the basic difference between the rod drawing and wet drawing process. So, here the tubes are also first pointed and then entered through the die where the point is gripped in a similar way as the bar drawing and pulled through in the form desired along a straight line. Now, when the final size is obtained, the tube may be annealed, that is the heat treatment process and straightened. Okay. Now, the uh, practice of drawing tubes without the help of an internal mandrel is known as tube sinking. So, it is important, so you must take a note, that is the 
tube sinking. So tube sinking is drawing tubes without the help of an internal mandrel. Okay. So we must keep in mind that without the help of an internal mandrel. So next we have again you can see over here here is a picture that clearly depicts the process of wire drawing. So uh, you can see over here this is the direction of travel in this particular direction and it is the starting stop in coil from this one you can see it unwinds and this is the lubrication bo box over here and this is the die and this is the draw block. So it, is, it gets you know coiled it get coiled over this particular draw block. So this is the wet drawing process. Okay. Now bundle drawing. In this process, many wires, when many wires, you know, are being drawn simultaneously as a bundle, is known as bundle drawing. Okay. Such as several thousand. Now to prevent sticking, the wires are separated from each other by a suitable material. Okay. The cross section of the wires is somewhat polygonal. Next, we have the deep drawing process. As I earlier discussed with you, that when the, uh, in drawing process, when the cup height is more than the half the diameter, is known as deep drawing, and when it is less than half the diameter, it is known as shallow drawing. Now, it is very easy with ductile materials, and I have already discussed with you. Due to the radial flow of material, the side walls increase in thickness as the height is increased. Okay. Now a cylindrical vessel with flat bottom can be deep drawn by double action deep drawing. Okay. So deep drawn is a process of drawing as well as stretching also. So we have already discussed the stretching in our previous classes. Now stresses on deep drawing. So you can see over here this is the uh, you know this the blank holder form black blank holder. Now after the uh, you know drawing the uh, your blank takes the shape of a cup. So this one was previous and later it takes like this one. Okay. So in flange of blank by axial tension and compression and in wall of the cup this one this wall simple inertia tension force is acting. Okay. Now the deep dry weight when the ratio of maximum blank diameter to the diameter of the cup that is the D by D. So capital D is the previous one because before the drawing operation is being done on the particular blank the diameter is given as blank diameter and it is denoted by capital D and diameter after the drawing operation that is the diameter of the cup is given by small d. Okay. So the ratio of maximum blank diameter to the diameter of the cup drawn is D by D. Okay. There is a limiting drawing ratio that is the LDR limiting drawing ratio after which the punch will pierce a hole in the blank instead of drawing. The ratio depends on material among the friction present etc. Okay. Now limiting drawing ratio it is restricted to 1.6 to 2.3. This is very important. So you need to take a note of this one limiting drawing ratio is 1.6 to 2.3. Next, again, the average reduction in deep drawing is D by D is kept at 0 0.5. Okay. So that is the diameter of the cup and there is a diameter of the blank. Now reduction is 1 minus D by D into, if you want to convert it into percentage, that is 100. You have to multiply with 100. So it will give you 50 percent as because D by D is 0 0.5. Okay. So first draw, there will be a reduction of 50 percent. In the second draw, there will be a reduction of 30 percent. The third draw, there will be 25 percent. Fourth draw, it will be 16, and in fifth draw, it will be 30 percent. Okay. Now let us discuss some of the dies that we generally use in many of the operations, uh, whether you can say as uh, punching or blanking or uh, you know this um, drawing process as well. Okay. So these are the commonly used dies that are being widely used in sheet metal operations. First is the Progressive dies. Now this is very important, and uh, most often uh, the questions, MCQ questions, are arising out of this progressive compound and combination dies. So progressive dies, uh, you know, it is uh, used to you know perform two or more op operations simultaneously. This is very important, and you must take a note. So progressive dies, it perform two or more op operations simultaneously in a single stroke of punch press. 
so this is very important in a single stroke of punch press two or more operations are simultaneously done okay next compound dies all the necessary operations are carried out at a single station in a single stroke of the ram okay to do more than one set of operation a compound die consists of the necessary sets of punches and dies okay now combination dies combination die is same as that of compound die with the main difference here that non cutting operations such as bending and forming are also included as a part of the operation okay so this is the important thing you must keep in mind or take a note somewhere about the progressive dies compound dies and combination dies next here is a picture for progressive you know uh, piercing and blanking die for making a simple washer okay so washer you know uh, that are being used widely in uh, nut bolt uh, fittings okay and screw fittings also so this is the ram this is the blanking punch there is a piercing punch this here you see this is the blanking punch and here is the piercing punch it will act here okay now this is the stripper uh, and this is the strap okay this is the strap and this is the finished washer it is a coming out of this particular passage you can see over here this is a finished washer okay so it looks like this one this one is the finished washer so you can see over here now this is the stop and this is the metal strip and these are the dies you can see over here okay so this is the metal strip from where the punches are coming out okay no sorry they are not the punches actually the washers are coming out now talking about the lubrication lubrication you know is uh, very essential for any of the operations being carried out so in drawing operations also proper lubrication is essential for to improve die life to reduce drawing forces to reduce temperature to improve surface finish next cleaning and uh, lubrication in wet drying so cleaning is done to remove scale and rust by acid pickling lubrication boxes precede the individual dies to help reduce friction drag and prevent wear of the dies now suling suling is the uh, you know the wear is coated with a thin coat of ferrous hydroxide which when combined with lime acts as a filler for the lubricant phosphating phosphating what happens in a thin film of manganese iron and zinc phosphate is applied to the wear electrolytic coating for very thin wear electrolytic coating of copper is used to reduce friction now here comes a uh, formula uh we just need to uh, give a, a reading of, of this formula actually they are being asked sometimes in get numericals to solve get numericals also so you must take a note so sigma d is given as sigma 0 into 1 plus b and the nomenclatures are all given over here so this is the drawing stress uh, is given by 1 plus b by b into 1 minus rf by r0 to the power 2b plus rf by r0 to the power 2b into sigma b so here you will find the nomenclature for all the things i have discussed in the formulas sigma 0 is the u strength of the material b equals to mu cot alpha so uh, mu is the coefficient of friction alpha is the half diagonal and ri is rf is the radius of the work space at exit uh, final radius you can say and r0 is the initial direct uh, di diameter uh, radius okay so radius of the work space at the entry r0 so maximum reduction per pass is given by you know with back stress sigma b this one is the back stress this one sigma b is given by this formula and without back stress the formula comes to be sigma z 0 into 1 plus b by b into 1 minus r by r 0 to the power 2 b now the degree of drawing or reduction factor in cross sectional area this is very important you must take note somewhere so d equal to a 0 minus a f so that is the initial area and this is the final area by a 0 that is the initial area and it is given by also you can see that there is a cross sectional area so pi by 4 d square and pi by 4 cancels out from taking common from all the uh, portions okay so ultimately it remains as d0 square minus df square by d0 square so d0 is the initial and df is the final diameter now the uh, two strengths given by ln a0 that is the initial diameter by final uh, sorry initial uh, area by final area and it is also given by ln 1 by 1 minus d this is the rod and tube drawing so you can see over here this is the tube sinking here is the die is given over here and this is being uh, the this is the pool over here uh, to make the tube the, to re reduce the diameter of the tube as well now here is the fixed plug drawing this is a plug uh, in between there is a plug this is the die same process as of this one only the plug is in between 
placed in between the uh, tube. Okay. Now this is the floating plug. This one is the floating plug, and this is the moving mandrel. So this mandrel can move. Okay. To produce the tube. Okay. Now. Here you can see the picture, same picture. You can see a bar being drawn. This is a form is attached with the jaw. This is a hook draw bench. This is the chain over here. So pull is in, on this side, and you have to pull this side. So the wire being drawn through this, you know, die. Okay, through this, this particular uh, orifice. Now next process we have to discuss is uh, swaging or kneading. Okay, now swaging is the hammering of rod or tube to reduce its diameter. Where the die itself acts as a hammer, so repeated blows are delivered from various angles, causing the metal to flow inward and assume the shape of the die. So that is the uh, swaging. Okay. Now it is a cold working process, and the term swaging is also applied to process where material is forced into a confining die to reduce its diameter. So here you can find this. You know these dies acts as a hammer to reduce the diameter of this particular. Now, coming to the final portion, that is the defects in the drawing. So, let us uh, discuss some defects in. Drawing. So, first one is the wrinkle. So, you can find over here the wrinkle being produced as a defect in drawing operation. What happens? An insufficient blank holder pressure causes wrinkles to develop on the flange, which may also extend to the wall of the cup. So, that is the uh, uh, wrinkle. Next is your fracture. What happens? Too much of a blank hold pressure, the blank holding, uh, you know, device, and friction may cause a thinning of the walls and a fracture at the flange, bottom, and the corners, or also. So this is you can see over here, fractured rim and bottom. This one is a fractured rim, and this is the bottom, and this is also fracture at the corner surface. Okay. Now, earring. While drawing a rolled stock, ears or lobes tend to occur because of the anisotropy induced by the rolling operation. So you can see over here, this is the directional ear. So it is also one of the defects in drawing. Another one is orange peel, a surface roughening that is a defect encountered in forming products from metal stock that cause a coarse grain size. It is due to uneven flow or to the appearance of the overly large grains. Usually, the result of annealing at too high a temperature. So, when you are applying too high temperature for annealing process, this particular defect occurs in uh, drawing process that is known as orange peel. So, I think uh, that is all you need to know about the uh, drawing process. Hope you have enjoyed today's class. Thank you for watching.